Hello and welcome to another Solana tutorial. Today I'm gonna walk you through the installation steps for setting up your system to develop on Solana. This is a great video for people who are just starting out. If you have no idea what you need to install, that's the one, watch this. I'm gonna show you just a few of the things that you might want to install when you develop on Solana. Of course, there's gonna be different setups and different people need different things and they also have different preferences and different systems. So this is not a one size fits all kind of a video. This is just my personal setup and my personal setup might be relevant for you if you follow along my videos because the things that I'm installing here in this video, I expect that you have installed if you wanna follow along with my videos. So those things I always have installed, so I will always just use them in other videos. And sometimes people post in my Discord, this command doesn't work for me. And I'm like, yeah, because you haven't installed it. So today we're gonna go through those installations and I hope this is helpful to you. There are Docker images out there that you can work with as well, allegedly. I have not worked with them though. I install stuff locally. So yeah, let's get going. Cause here's the thing, boom. I just got myself a new computer. Like completely, this is completely clean. All I did so far was install my camera and audio drivers and OBS such that I can record. And then I got myself the Brave browser, this thing, because I don't want to use Edge. Yeah, and here we are. Those are the things I installed. Can get rid of that. Otherwise, this is completely fresh Windows 11. That's my setup. New computer, I'm excited about this. The reason why I bought a new computer is because my old one, just did not manage to record 1080p video with a green screen, you know, filter all the green stuff away. And at the same time, me developing, this was just not working. So I got myself a new one. So now we need to install all the things here again. So that's what we do. I have Windows 11 Pro in whatever version, in whatever build. And this is already the first topic. Don't use Windows <laughs> unless you really have to. I mean, I don't have to at all. I could just get myself a Linux distribution on there. I will as dual boot, but the reason why I'm still on Windows is that my editing software just works on Windows. So I wanna have Windows anyway, because I'm so used to that editing software. Vegas, in case you really wanted to know. And also I'm just used to Windows. That's what I grew up with. So I'm still a Windows user mainly. So that's why I'm on Windows. I'm making it difficult for myself though. You can make it easy for yourself by using Linux or Mac, not sure about Mac. But yeah, Windows is a bit difficult. It's a bit tricky. So the first thing we want to do is get ourselves a virtual Linux distribution on here. And for that, we will need to use WSL2, Windows subsystem for Linux. So WSL, I just type WSL, seems to be installed already. So I saw a command line pop up for a second and then die again, so, well, that's great. Okay, we will learn how to install WSL on Windows 11. Okay, PowerShell, you say. Shell, not point. And nobody needs PowerPoint. So, Solan, well, thank you for stealing two letters of my name. WSL install. I mean, that's looking good installing Windows subsystem for Linux. I'm afraid that I will need to install some virtualization flags in my BIOS. At least that's what I had to do with my old laptop. So I might need to restart and come back. Oh, and then it's even installing Ubuntu directly. Perfect. So that's already a distribution that we get. And Ubuntu is nice. I like my Ubuntu. That's also something I'm used to. When I used to have a Linux distribution, it's usually Ubuntu. But there are other good ones, like I don't really have a favorite, I'm just used to that one. And yeah, for WSL it really doesn't matter, I just need some kind of Linux such that I can actually work with Rust, because Rust won't work on Windows. It's successful, ooh. The requested operation, 
is successful. <laughs> Changes will not be effective until your system is rebooted. Okay, so I definitely need to do a reboot, but I hope that a reboot is enough and I don't need to enable anything else, but we will see. So yeah, I'll be back. As a fellow Austrian and former governor said, I'll be back. And we're back. Let's go. Here I can at least give myself my own username. Installation seems to have been successful. Hey, can you, oh, did I not press enter? Anyway, password. Installation successful. Bam. Nice. Nice. And we even have the CLI here already. Andy at Sol Andy laptop. Nice. Yeah, I'm probably gonna uh, change the display of this again. That's the less important stuff. The most important stuff for working with Solana is the Solana CLI, which we don't have yet. So let's get that. But yeah, it seems to already have worked. We have a Ubuntu, a virtualized Ubuntu, but a Ubuntu. We got Ubuntu 22.4.2 long time support. Perfect. Jemmy Jellyfish. Yeah, cool. Got a Ubuntu. Let's get ourselves some Solana specific things like the Solana CLI. Install the Solana tool suite, which is pretty simple. You literally just follow these steps and you're fine. It's literally one command. Okay, it's two commands, but one command inside the other. So first we download the installer, make sure that this is actually from solana.com and you don't have any like wrong links and make sure that you're here on solana.com and that certificates match and stuff. And then basically we execute that after we've downloaded it. So we're downloading it. We're in version 1.17.5 by now, which is mid November, 2023. This version will of course change. So this here will also change right now. We're in 117.5. And I recommend that you have the most up-to-date version unless there is a reason for you to downgrade. Maybe the newest version has some issues still, but you know, you never know. While that's downloading, let's think about what else we need. I wanna also install Node for developing TypeScript. I need to install Rust. Oh, an IDE would be good. And we're gonna go with Visual Studio Code. And then I also wanna install Anchor. I think those are the most important things. While that's downloading, let's continue with VS Code, Visual Studio Code. That's free, downloads for free. That's one reason why I like it. And I think it's working on most systems. It's not just a Windows thing. Yeah, it's got it for Mac, got it for Linux as well. I'm just gonna install that. You know, of course I agree without reading. No, of course I read, I just cut it out of the video. <laughs> oh yeah, I like this, open with code as a context menu. Add to path, yes, that sounds good. Okay, let's go. We're gonna launch Visual Studio because there are many things to set up in here as well. I would like this to be bigger. Ah, that's what I want, yes. Is that too big now? I like it nice and big because for one for you guys such that you properly see what's happening and also because I'm pretty much blind I literally I need like big icons <laughs> otherwise I, I don't get the people who like have such small text and I'm like I can't even see that yeah anyway so I don't know maybe 1.5 that looks okay okay there are probably some other settings that I want to change I mean that looks okay just about big enough and I can always do this I think we're getting ahead of ourselves though, because if I install the Rust analyzer before I install Rust, that's a bit weird. I'm gonna press enter, because for some reason, sometimes this is just weird. Close and you open your terminal to apply path changes or run the following command. So we can quickly do that. Ah, apparently that keyboard is a bit different. I think, wait. Yep, my enter key is much smaller. That's why I keep hitting other buttons instead of enter. Okay, and now I should have Solana installed and I can check the version. Yes, we've got the Solana CLI with 117.5 installed. Perfect. That's good, Solana CLI set up. 
that was easy, right? I do also want to get the CLI in PowerShell, just in case I only work on Windows. I also want to install the CLI and on Windows this works similarly, just that I need two steps. Step one, download it. There we go. And then step two, actually install it. So just execute the file that I just downloaded. I can specify the version. So here we just downloaded some install script and with this script we now actually perform the download of that version and then install it in PowerShell as well. So this is not the virtualized Linux, this is Windows now. There we, what? Unable to symlink, why? This should both be the user space. I don't know why I can't symlink this. Well, I guess we're gonna do this as admin then. Another PowerShell as admin and install the same thing. There we go. You just need to restart your shell. Perfect, that was quick. Now I'm just gonna run a new one. And then here I should have Solana. Yes, nice. So we also have this version installed on Windows and on Linux. Cool, done, done. Next up, Rust. Let's go to the Solana cookbook. Is there installation guide? Yes. Okay, so actually before we go Rust, let's go TypeScript because that's in the way how you develop. Usually you first just using the web 3 js for stuff and then eventually you're gonna write your programs on Solana and then you're actually gonna need Rust. So let's actually start with Node. For that we need to install Yearn or NPM, which we don't have, but we can get. Or maybe I should first update because I haven't even done that once. Yeah, now we need to read the index such that it knows where to install the stuff from. And this again is from Ubuntu. There we go. Now we can install it. And guess what? I also want to install it here, but here it's a bit more difficult. We need to go to the official Node.js website, Node.js.org. Long time support is usually the one I go for don't need the latest features. So again, I'm gonna read through this. Package Manager Online Documentation Shortcuts. Yeah, why not? Let's install all of that. Some NPM models need to be compiled from C. Some tools, Python and Visual Studio build tools need to be installed. Well, if you automatically install them, I guess I trust this script because I got it from nodejs.org. See, with like, computers, I have to make a lot of trust assumptions because they're not as sandboxed as, for instance, mobile applications. Mobile applications are way more sandboxed, like way more independent in their own thing and they can't access, you know, storage of other applications that easily. On computers, it's different. So in the beginning, I was like, yeah, that's the way it should be, also on mobile phones, but then now, with a security mindset, I actually like more sandbox setups, but you know, whatever. I'm gonna trust that that doesn't install anything weird and I just let it install. Node.js has been successfully installed. Nice, what's this? Oh, that's the tools for Node.js. Will require three gigs. Wow, downloads third-party software. Now I'm not sure anymore if I really need that. Just gonna open myself a new PowerShell and see that NPM is here in version 10.1. So I'll only install additional stuff if I really have to. And for now, I don't have to, so I won't. I do want yearn though as well. So what I'm gonna do is just npm install yearn. Added one package in one second. Ooh, that's quick. Nice. Oh, now I created myself a yearn project in here. Oops, my bad. Oops, I made this a project. Ah, <laughs> uh, I just wanted Yearn version in 122.21. Cool, so we've got Yearn, we've got NPM in here. I also want Yearn, so it's still CMD test. That's not the right thing, no. sudo install Yearn. Yes, cool. What? 0.32, what did I install here? Note, selecting CMD test instead of yearn. Oh, I should have configured that depository. Remove it again. And then 
add that depository and then update and install. Okay, oh, this looks better in version 122.19. Different subversion, but this looks good now. Okay, cool. Got Yearn installed. Yearn and NPM both on Windows and on Linux installed. Yes, you gotta do it twice. Well, you don't have to, but I'm doing it twice. Okay, so we got Node. Let's say I'm gonna make myself a folder called Solana where I put all my Solana projects or whatever. Then in here, I would create a folder node modules such that I install all of the NPM stuff into that one and I don't have it copied all over. So if that's my install project, if I'm here now and I say NPM install Solana web three JS, for instance, then it won't create a new folder in here, but it will actually be one folder up in node modules. There will be my Solana stuff then. But how you structure your node, mo it can also make sense to have a node modules folder per project. I don't like it as much because I install the same stuff over and over again. So I don't want to always have to install that one. I just have it once there and then the projects find it. Yeah, that's pretty much that one. Solana Web3, might want to add SBL token as well. Yearn is the better package manager. I should use that one. Done in 48 seconds. Cool. So it also put that into that folder. Now we have the Web3 and the SBL token. And we might add some more stuff eventually. Wallet adapters and whatnot. But let's continue with installing Rust. For Windows, please visit the Rust installation site. Now, I don't know if I even want to attempt to install it for Windows because actually I can't. It even says I should use subsystem for Linux. So we're just gonna use it there and do this, which is also what it says here, no? Yeah, that's the same. So literally download this and then run it. Cool, I guess I can do that. Let's go. Okay, commands will be added to dot cargo slash bin and that path will be added to the path environment variable. Yes, yes. So default host, default toolchain stable. I mean, that all sounds good. I'm gonna proceed with installation. Nice. Rust is installed now. Great. That was easier than expected. I think the first time I did it, I had troubles with that. To get started, you need to restart your current shell or do this. So don't have no cargo, but now I do. <laughs> That's just because I had to add it to the path. So 1.74 looks good. So Rust is installed. What else do we need? Anchor. Because usually if you write programs for Solana, you do it in Anchor because it's just way easier. Solana Anchor install. The Anchor book has an installation guide. Sweet. First we get Rust from here. We've been through that. Then the Solana CLI. Yes, we done that. Yearn, we did that. Anchor, woo. AVM, the Anchor version manager can be installed using cargo. Oh great, we just installed that. We get it from GitHub Project Serum Anchor. I'm not sure how up to date the Anchor book is, but I would get it from Coral. Because Project Serum was this FTX thing, right? And now it's Coral, the company that does Backpack and the Backpack Exchange. And that's yesterday. Project Serum, also yes. Hold on, that links to the same thing. It also links to that one. So there seems to be a, a link to Coral. So it probably doesn't matter which one I install. And yet I feel safer installing from Coral Anchor. So, oh, I said I'm gonna do that. But Coral XYZ, I just feel safer getting it from here. Warning, duplicate package. 
That should be fine, I hope. Whoa, downloading a bunch, compiling a bunch. See, that's the kind of speed I like. Compiling it quick. When I was usually waiting for stuff to compile with this thing, it just took forever. I mean, you've seen my videos. It just took forever. This is much better now. <laughs> Installed package AVM version 0.29. So, anchor. Nope. Uh, I first need to say AVM use latest. Sure, can do. You need to run AVM install before you can use it. Okay, I mean, it suggests all the things anyway, so just gonna do it. Just gonna do as you say. Wait, which one did I install? That'll take a while. But it's way quicker than on some other outdated device. And even while it's installing, my video still seems to be quite fluid. Not on focus if I run out of the camera focus, but yeah, it was a good, th good choice to get a new computer. Good choice. Well done. Much better. This last one takes a bit. Suddenly it's done. Almost. It starts again. Why does it do the same thing again? I don't know. Whatever. Just let it install again. Hey, successfully installed Anchor. Yay. Now using Anchor version da 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 da. Is it already here? Yes, nice. Anchor CLI version 0 0.29. And I guess that's all the CLI stuff that I wanna install. Let's do, let's do a first demo proof of installation. Poi! Cause now when I create a new project, then it will again download all the packages and stuff. This is mainly node stuff now. Okay, I think that looks good. Poi, cool. So we have our stuff, but that is always nicer to look at in an IDE. So let's connect to WSL, starting VS Code in WSL. And then we're gonna open a folder, Solana Poi. Okay, so, and as usual, we have those things. Me personally, for those videos, I got used to putting that on this side. There was a way how I can do this with the entire thing. Yeah, that's what I want. Because I'm usually here and I cover that part and so I want this part free for the source code. That just works better for me, like for my videos. You can, of course, structure that how you want. This is not really that relevant. but. What is relevant is that we, <laughs> now that I cover this part, <laughs> uh, uh, we have the JavaScript stuff where there's nothing. That's the dependencies that it just installed into here again, because this, this is now on WSL. Like all of this is on WSL. But, and this here is the actual anchor program. So just to demo that this actually works, I can say anchor build, and then it needs to download some stuff again. And what I'm still missing here is my Rust analyzer. That's an extension. So we're gonna go to extensions and we have the WSL extension and we want the Rust analyzer. I think that's the one. Just gonna install that. While this fetches that stuff, we're gonna install that. Cool, that was fast. So we've got the Rust analyzer here. That's hopefully gonna analyze my Rust because then it shows me types and all that stuff and I can use autocomplete. So yeah, the Rust analyzer is pretty helpful, but it takes a while to initialize. So here we're just waiting now. I'm gonna do a magic trick where I just disappear and reappear. Right, that was the fetching and now comes the Compiling and building, but yeah, so much faster on this computer. I love it. And I think Rust Analyzer also made it. You are ready, because this looks way better now. Yes, this is a Rust Analyzer message. And stuff like this is provided through the Rust Analyzer. So this works, love it. Ain't using the context, you're right. 
whatever that was but yeah i think it looks also good i mean that i just fixed so let's build it again there we go ha 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 in less than a second oh that's amazing well yeah, yeah let's test it so i'm gonna be like solana test validator just to see that that also works yes Cool, so we got that running. And then we say Solana airdrop a fucking ton of soul. Okay, maybe not that much, <laughs> but that much, okay. <laughs> I guess that's enough. Yeah, I mean, I do have quite some soul now on local and I can just say anchor deploy. This by the way, is the same as this. Right, this uh, Ubuntu, I just have it in here. It's a WSL terminal. So yeah, that's also Ubuntu in here. Cool, deploy success. Well, that was easy. That's the on-chain part. Let's have a look how we call this. We've got it built, so we got the types. So that's the IDL more or less in TypeScript form. And we can just start it, anchor test but with skipping the test validator, local validator. There we go. Oh, that doesn't work. That does look weird. What does that mean? Okay, let's build an app and then just TS node run. Oh, I don't have TS node. Well, that I definitely need. Okay. Something is off. I can't even run, can't even run a simple script. Unable to compile TypeScript. Cannot find name console. Because the lib compiler option is set in the base configuration. Correct fix is installing the type definitions for Node.js. Here's how. Cool. Well, didn't fix. Yeah, this is, I don't know what TypeScript is. Do you have the same issue on Windows? Do I have TS node here? No, I don't. Let's install globally. Edit one package. Let's add another package. TS node. It's a good one. Okay, 20 packages. And then those types will need them. Cool. Do I have TS node now? Yes. Yes, and that works. Okay. So Windows that works. Let's get it to work on here. Hey, ho, hey, ho. Okay, maybe I just installed the wrong version. Let's do the same thing. Fuck, okay. Also a super user. Because we install globally, I think that's why it needs those privileges. And then, okay, new one. Yeah, something is really broken with TS Node and my Ubuntu. And this is the frustrating part where you're like, I just want to get it to work. If something is not working out of the box, it's like, ah. So don't worry if that happens to you. It happens to me all the time with the simplest stuff, right? Anchor this time worked out of the box, but then TypeScript doesn't. But it can't be so difficult, come on. It's always recommended to remove any existing installations of Node.js or NPM. The different types of installation can lead to strange and confusing conflicts. Yes, yes, welcome to my life. The version of Node that you get with apt-get is outdated. Hmm, Node version manager. So let's remove them again because we don't wanna mess that up. We uninstall and type script, okay. Okay, so NVM is installed in version 0.39. Let's NVM install LTS, installing version 20. Okay, yeah, okay, cool, but that doesn't give me my TS node, does it? Can I then use NPM again to install TypeScript? And 
see now I can install it without super user. That's cool though. TS node. Ah. Although did I do that? Hey, hey, we got TS node. Yes. Well, that was the most difficult part so far. I ended up using the node version manager and installed it with that and then it worked. Okay, sure, why not? Okay, after all of that, my run script should work now. Yes, okay, that works, cool. So I can build myself my front end stuff. There we go. <laughs> Segmentation fault, nice. Not nice, but sure. Sure, I've never gotten a segmentation fault in TypeScript. That's a first. So probably it doesn't like that. It doesn't like a lot of things, but. So read the secret, put it in here. It's a keeper. Now we can put the keeper in here. And now we can put the connection and wallet in here like that. Okay, then we have a program. And then we could can do the test on the program and that will now hopefully work. Run. Segmentation fault again. Corrupted double linked list. There's something clearly going wrong here. So the installation worked great, but the actually using that does not. What if I go to my and open a terminal here? We're at WSL, but we're on Windows now. And we run it here. Bad secret key size. But see, that's what I would expect, right? I had that error before. Okay, we have a buffer and we have a string. Two string then. So this keeps sec faulting, but here I should now be able to run it. Hi. This is weird. But yeah, here I can even send the transaction and then I could confirm this transaction and see that my installation of Anchor is actually successful because we were able to deploy this and now run this instruction with this little script, just that for some reason my TypeScript on Ubuntu keeps sec faulting. I don't understand it and yes it is probably an installation issue maybe i forgot to yearn install or something like that could actually be <laughs> was that it i just didn't install the packages that it's supposed to use was i that stupid apparently yes sorry my bad i was that stupid that on, <laughs> on on Ubuntu, I just didn't install the packages. Oh man, oh man, it was so easy. Okay, well. There we go. Now it's successful. I literally forgot to install on here all of the packages. Ah and a yearn install fixed it. Okay, good that we figured that out. Great, so we installed the Solana CLI, we installed Rust, we installed Anchor, we installed Node and TypeScript, we installed Visual Studio Code and the Rust Analyzer, and we proved that it all works. What a day, yeah. I'm happy I have a new computer now. So in future videos, I'm gonna be faster in development. That's gonna be great. I love it. Yeah, and um, now you know what my setup looks like. I have this Ubuntu part and the Windows part and I use them both. If I need to do on-chain development, then I go to WSL. And if I just write some scripts, I usually stay on Windows. This was the short how to install all things Solana for your development needs video. Now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go to bed and enjoy my nice new setup tomorrow. And I will see you in a future video. You can check out older videos, 
Give this a like and subscribe if you're new here. And I wish you great success for installing all of the things that you need. Installing stuff can sometimes be a hassle. It worked quite well for me today. Like it pretty much all worked out of the box. Struggled a little bit in the end, but I figured it out. Yeah, and I now have a working machine again where I can work. A working machine where I can work. Yeah, that makes sense, Andy.